So welcome everyone to our team, our very first um, Team PD podcast discussion of 2019. I've kind of been slacking on the pod. Oh, I like that dance, Emily. Yes, yes, she's excited. Um, so we haven't done one of these all year and I was like, how did that happen? I don't know how that happened, but this year has, I mean, I've been traveling a lot. I think that's how that happened. <laughs> and, um, but I'm like, we gotta, we gotta continue with this because personal development is so important. And I really loved listening to this podcast. I hope you guys were able to listen to it as well. Um, if you weren't, let me tell you which podcast we'll be discussing today. It's from Jenna Kutcher's Gold Digger. And um, I'm trying to, trying to find the actual podcast name. Um, of course, it's like, ah, uh, Jenna Kutcher. It was episode, anyone know what episodes? Oh, look. It was jennacutcherblog.com slash Sarah with an H, Heron, H-E-R-R-O-N. That's the link to the podcast. Thank you, Lindy. Um, and I can't remember what episode it was because now my podcasts are being weird and it's only showing me like the one that I was, the next one that I was listening to, which really annoys me. Um, why can I not get back to this? Anyway. Oh, episode 236. Thanks. Lindy will keep me on track. <laughs> Lindy kept me on track on the cruise too. You guys, when I go on vacation, I literally go on vacation mode and I don't. I, I'm just like, wait, what are we doing? Where are we going? Like I told my husband, if I'm not driving, I look out the window and that's what I do on vacation. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was a really great podcast. I, um, I'd been wanting to listen to that one anyways, because I just read a really on my way to the color street cruise on the airplane. I listened to an audio book that I'm going to talk about. Let me pull that one up. Um, called getting noticed. And it is only, um, it's a book by Lindsay Teague Moreno. She's actually like in um, an essential oils direct selling company and she makes like millions, millions, multiple millions. <laughs> um, and she's really fun, super down to earth mom, hardcore girl boss. And it was really fun to listen to because she gives some really practical tips for social media and she talks about stories, sharing your stories. So it was cool to listen to getting noticed. And then today to listen to this podcast, um, by Sarah Heron, um, about, let me see the top, about the power of owning your story to make a difference. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'll share a couple of my takeaways, but I really don't want this to be um, just me talking. It's a discussion. So be thinking of what you want to share and, and get brave and, um, and, and be willing to share some of your takeaways because I love hearing from you guys and I always learn so much from you. Um, but I loved that she said, well, some of the takeaways and I wasn't able to take notes on everything because I was listening while I was like putting on my makeup. Um, but she said to, well, I loved this quote because you know I'm a huge advocate. I'm a huge um, advocate for you know women empowering women to become more confident. And this is one of her exact quotes. It said, "The key to confidence truly is figuring out what's giving you lack of confidence and how to overcome that." I thought that was great, even though it doesn't have anything to do with your stories. Um, but. I just loved that kind of solution, like that, that's how you get confident. It's just figuring out what's giving you lack of confidence and then trying to overcome that. Um, and she, she gave some tips for how to, like learning how to tell your story. She said, because it's hard. I think that often we think, and I know I do this a lot where I'm like, well, a lot of this stuff I do is like just average 
you know what I mean? Like is like nothing. I mean, like we just feel like, well, my day-to-day -day stuff is nothing mind blowing. Like my day-to-day -day stories are nothing mind blowing. Um, <clears throat> but I really started thinking about, so I used to have, I had, I used to be a huge journal writer, like growing up as a, I got a journal when I was eight years old and I started writing in it when I was eight years old and I would just talk about anything and everything in there. And I often talked about boys and food. It's funny because I would talk about food a lot in my journal, which if you guys follow my Instagram stories, you'll notice I talk about food a lot there too, or I show food a lot. So that hasn't changed, but, um, it's just fun or it's just made me kind of realize that our social media can be sort of like a journal entry. Um, and not that we have to like share all our deepest, darkest secrets on social media publicly, but you know, when you're writing in your journal, sometimes you're just giving a recap of your day or sometimes you're just sharing your opinion on things or sometimes you're just sharing your feelings for that day. I think that if we all did that a little bit more, I think that we um, would really make some connections on social media because people would be like, oh, I am not alone. Like, I, like, this girl thinks about the same things that I think about or has the same opinions I have or um, has the same feelings that I have. It's kind of those, I think sometimes we overthink social media, you know? And it really can be just like a, a journal, like a, again, not sharing your deepest, darkest secrets, but just like sharing what you're, what's going on in your life, what you're feeling. Um, and it, it can be sometimes those day to day things. That's what people connect with. I loved on Jenna in the, in the podcast, they were talking about Rachel Hollis's book, Girl, Wash Your Face, where she shares about like this random story about how Rachel Hollis made fun of another girl for like shaving her toenails. And literally every time I shave my, or not her toenails, sorry, her, to, her toes. Um, and little, literally every time I shave my toes, which I totally do, um, I think of Rachel Hollis now, which is kind of funny. So, but she like shared this little simple story and we connected with it, right? Whether we shave our toes or not. <laughs> um, and so it's sometimes those really simple stories that we forget to tell. I, I do it too. And I'm trying to really like catch myself as I think of what I'm going through the day. Like, because I never want to put it out on social media that I'm perfect. And then I have it all together. Cause that's just not true for anyone. Um, and I think making it sort of like an, a journal entry can yeah, the daily grind, like Emily just typed, the daily grind will always get connections. Amen, girl. Um, so I just started thinking about that. And in fact, there is a girl on Instagram that you guys can follow that's really, really good about this. Um, her name is Ashley Smith Fitness. Um, she was in my previous direct sales company. She's really good at, at <clears throat> just kind of sharing the day, the daily grind. And, um, even her pictures are just the daily, our daily photos. They're not like, um, they look for, they look semi-professional, like they look professional ish, which I think is good because you don't want them to be too pro because then you're not relatable. Right. Um, so, you know, just very authentic, um, and very, it has like a journal entry feel to it. And here's the thing. I'm not a wordy person. Like I, um, if, I always kind of, it's like the difference between like my cousin Erin and I, she'll text me and it will be like a super long text and I'll write back and be like, cool. Like That's how I am. I'm not a very wordy girl, maybe because I have had six brothers. Um, and so you don't have to write this super long post to share your story or whatever. It can be a simple paragraph. Um, but just sharing that, that daily stuff. So what are some of the, what are you, what are some of your guys thoughts about that, about, you know, thinking of your stories as a journal entry and anything she kind of shared regarding that.
Anyone want to unmute themselves and be brave? Emily, I know you do. <laughs> do it, do it. I'm okay. Did I read your face right? Your face kind of looked like you wanted to share. I always have something to share. Okay. <laughs> so I realized, and probably here just more recently, and I think even after training on the cruise, to think about the content that I do just every day. So like the things that I'm doing every day and to be thinking about before I do it, okay, like this week I need two mom posts this week. I need two farm posts this week. I know, you know, just the, in my having it ready so that when you go to do those paragraphs, it's not so much work. And I realized even like last night we came in for the, with groceries and I just posted, you know, like mom's out there. How do you say no to kids in the grocery store? And my kids sitting there holding cupcakes. I have 20 comments in like five minutes, you know, like it's just the silly stuff that people make connection to. And you really didn't have to think that hard about it. You just thought, how do I get my kid to stop wanting stuff in the grocery store? Oh wait, I know a bunch of moms that are following me that can help with this. So you've always said, you know, ask open-ended questions, but then it doesn't have to be that hard. It was just what was going like popped in my mind. Like this kid needs to stop wanting stuff in the grocery store and I posted it and it went well. So it's just the little tiny stuff every day, but also being aware of your six P's and what are the topics you get in with it. And it doesn't have to be that hard. Yes, girl. Yes. I love that. It's that's so relatable. Everyone's been a sucker. Every mom's been a sucker at the grocery store for like, ah, yeah, this here's the, here's the dang cupcake. Now be quiet. <laughs> that's the stuff that's so relatable. And I think sometimes we think we need this like mind blowing post, but that's the stuff people connect with. Yeah. You don't have to put that much thought into it. And you know what you guys, I was just thinking of, um, I've shared this before, but I really love using Planoly as like to help me kind of plan out my posts. And I just remembered that they have a fun thing where um, instead of doing like a picture or like adding a picture to your lineup or whatever, you can do a placeholder and you can and you can label it. So lately, whenever I think of a story that I'm like, oh my gosh, I should share this. I think my audience would really connect to it. I will just do a placeholder to remind me about that story. So I'll title it like, you know, maybe grocery store or whatever. And then, <clears throat> so I'm making one right now. And then you add it and then it's in your lineup here, right here, this says grocery store. And so that can be like sort of a trigger to remind you to share that story sometime that week. Um, so yeah. The, I kind of like the placeholder feature for that. Um, any other thoughts you guys want to share regarding making it more like a journal? I used to be so good at journal writing, you guys, and then I kind of just stopped. So I think I'm going to make my social media a little more like that because I want my goal, or one of my goals this year is to really just, re my word for the year is relate and to be relatable is to to improve my relationships with others and to be relatable um and so that happens when we share our stories and we get authentic um so, so I, who else okay i'm can you hear me yes who's talking so i can look for your face it's laura um i have a new computer and this is my first time like using it so I didn't know if it worked. Yeah, it works. So before I joined Color Street, like 20 months ago, I was excellent at social media. Just naturally, like I just loved sharing and relating and connecting. Um, and I would post at least once a day. It, obviously it was for no other reason than to connect. Um, and then I joined Color Street and I don't know really what happened, but I think I got, I think I psyched myself out. I think I um, 
kind of forgot how to just do it because I liked it because I loved it that I because I liked connecting and I and I maybe thought too much about it um so I don't know if anyone else has had that experience but um I I don't know I I think just in the last few months I feel like I finally let myself just get back to that time when it wasn't about furthering my business and it was just just about connecting and enjoying social media again the way i enjoyed it before the way i just naturally loved being a part of that community i've always loved facebook i've always loved it more than instagram simply because i am a wordy person i like to add detail and so i tended to love facebook more than other formats because it was it lends more to stories and to actual like conversation um so yeah i feel like i guess my advice would be that if you feel like you're struggling and it's not natural to kind of step back and just think of it as connection and, and just when you can do it that organically and and if planning out your six five six words or whatever is just causing so much like it's just it stressed me out because i felt like I don't know, but I did this exercise. Hold on one second. I did this, but um, starting in January, I decided I was going to be better at planning and like having a planner. And so I actually went back through all of my posts. And these were posts that I didn't plan once. And I wrote down what their topic was. And I had naturally done a pretty good balance of posts and i realized that i remembered that i was i was good at this like i was good at this once before i started overthinking it before i thought i had to put some kind of a plug in every post before i thought it had to like be anything before i just so i don't know I, long way to say i just feel like once i got to the point where i remembered to just be natural and just get back to like enjoying social media again i've seen a huge uptick in connection with people and so i enjoy it again <laughs> yes i love it everyone's saying lindy says i'm identifying with what you're saying laura and bethany's like yes laura so people we can agree and i think i love that you mentioned that like we we do overthink it and so just going back to when we you know shared before Color Street, and um, and I'm all and I, I'm always saying this: if you're not having fun, you're not doing right. And like that's why I love social media because it's fun for me. Like I love connecting in that way. And um, and then um, <clears throat> Shashin saying Facebook stories are so much fun now and easy to connect. I agree. I love you doing Facebook and Instagram stories. Um, because they're they're just more raw and real and it's just kind of like I don't have to overthink it it's just like hey here's <laughs> in the last 24 hours I've posted two stories of my dog wearing a sombrero like that's <laughs> that's you know because it's fun it's fun to put a sombrero on your adorable dog so um anyways so yeah thank you for sharing Laura any other thoughts on this particular topic one um who is talking bethany is that you yeah um for me i have a really hard time even though i'm a very um straightforward and honest person i have a really hard time being open on social media because my dad was like a really overbearing protective person and he kind of like hated journals. He, ha he hated like oversharing or like um, even like talking to friends about private stuff. Like he was just really against it. And so I've kind of had to break out of that as um, doing this in direct sales and just learn how to be myself in front of other people and how to actually talk about it. So I've kind of had to start like all the way back at the beginning of like, who am I? 
and like actually build my story as I go. So um, if you have never shared your story at all, or if you've never um, been comfortable even speaking in front of other people, even typing it is hard sometimes um, because you don't know where to start. You don't even know like how to tell people like who you are without um, necessarily a video or whatever to go with it. Um, so you kind of have to like start at the bottom and build up. And I'm finally to the point where like, I feel like my audience knows me enough that I can be more open. So like um, in the podcast where she's talking about you know, she's in public now, like she doesn't have a choice. She's not even, she wasn't even able to like just post something. She was on air pretty much. Um, that was kind of like a connecting thing for me. Like I'm in the public now. I don't have a choice because I chose it. So I have to do every day and be intentional with what I'm putting out there. But I also have to like keep being vulnerable because that's with that intention. That's with that me telling my story. Thank you for sharing that, Bethany. And here's a little tip, and you might think I'm evil for sharing this, but you can hide posts from your parents if you want, which I've done. Because my mom like overanalyzes some of my posts, so I'm like, is I'll do it, it'll say share to everyone but my mom. <laughs> so that's an option on Facebook, just so you know. Um, Right. Yeah. It's good to know. Good tip. Um, okay. Other thoughts regarding that. I, oh, I thought of something. Oh, this is a discussion that my roommate and I had, my roommate on the cruise and I were having about being vulnerable. Um, and, uh, cause it's scary to be vulnerable on social media, you know, to share some of our stories are harder to tell than others. Um, and so I was talking to her about that, you know, how do you, like, what do you, what do you think is the best way to go about that? And I really love what she said. Um, she said, she said to, um, that she shares the stories that she's already overcome. So they don't have to be necessarily what you're going through right now. They can be the ones that you've already struggled with and you've already overcome. And I think sometimes we assume that everybody already knows those things, but I mean, there's so many things people forget that we've gone through. I mean, like Laura just shared something that I, I never knew she'd gone through on social media. So, um, <clears throat> so sharing those stories and sometimes even resharing those stories because we get new friends. If you should be growing your network. And so resharing those stories again, like I assume everyone knows my, you know, my color tree story or you know, things like that. And it's like, nope, you got to keep sharing them again and again. So don't just share it once and assume that everyone's seen it and everyone knows it. You might have to revisit it again and, and mention it in like three months. Um, let's see. I know Nelly wanted to say something. Can you unmute yourself, Nelly? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm walking into a private area here. Bethany said something that, um, you know, resounded with me, and I wanted to share this real quick, but this is something I've been struggling with for a long time because I share lots of myself, but I don't share the biggest thing about myself. Um, and I'm going to try not to get emotional. Okay, but anyway, so my friends, the ones that really know me are always saying, Nelly, Nelly, share that because it will help so many people, but it's so private because I was married for 17 years to a narcissist and the effects of it are massive in my life with my son. So everyone sees the cuteness and the fun of Noah, but I don't ever share like this dark thing that's happening. And I know that it would help so many people, but um, I've been so afraid to, even my Instagram, by the way, I stopped posting in September and I, it's like, I feel like this shaming on myself when I hear what we should be doing, what we should be doing on Instagram, but it's only because I realize he's out there and he, I'm exposed versus in Facebook, 
everyone that knew him and us is gone. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always share the public, the, the private things in there because those people don't know that person, that part of my life or any of those things. So it gives me like this horrible fear that, oh my God, I'm already out there. He's going to know that I'm doing this. He's going to know that I don't have a full-time job and that this is my job and he'll come after me and all these other things. But there are these fears that are not true, that I know are not true anymore. Um, They're not fully overcome, Kelly, but I love what you had said because my friend reminded me today, she's like, Nellie, you have so many chapters already closed in that book and so many chapters you could write. And so many things that can help moms that have kids that have dads that are this way. It's a painful thing, but we're overcoming so many things and he's learning so many things that I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much to tell people, but it is scary. Does that make sense? And also because of what Bethany said, because for me, I grew up in a very, like, um, my mom, Puerto Rican. Okay. So this will tell you everything. Puerto Rican, you never talk ill of your family, your mom, you never say anything you know, without anyone in our family hearing about it and telling somebody else and then you've been sharing too much. So it just gets like this paranoia for me, like, oh my God, who am I posting it? Who do I need to block out? Who do I, it's just such a stressful thing for me. Does that make sense? Totally. And, um, and I'm at, at I'm at a place though, where <laughs> I don't want to get it given F anymore. <laughs> and, um, and it's hard to let go of that, like fear because I do have a good story to share. You know what I mean? I know when I have shared some dark things or some deep things, people connect quickly. Like my weight loss, it was like a hundred pounds girls. And then I just put 30 back, but a hundred pounds when I left this man and I shared a picture a year ago of a hundred pound Nelly, you know what I mean? And that was massive, but I feel like the whole story is not out there. So anyway, I struggle with social media big time doing the six P's has killed me because it's a lot of that stuff. Does that make sense? Like I just hold back a bunch of stuff like, Oh, and I overanalyzed a lot of stuff. And then, um, then I'm like, Oh, that's too old. I can't post it anymore. Oh my God. Relevance. You know what I mean? Relevance and being, but this weekend really did just kind of pump me, like just be vulnerable and just be you and not give a rip and just put it out, (laughs) put it out there. So that's where I'm at. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Nelly. We just love you. And we love that you shared that. And uh, I got chills when you were saying that, like, I think a big thing is just thinking that, you know, even if just it makes one person feel less alone, like that makes it worth it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, people are going to judge me if I say these like things but you know there are millions of people and at least one of them has been through that or done that like um so so sharing can just really make it's just such a it's just so ironic that just i feel like people connect with us more when we're just like transparent this is me you know and yeah and and yet every, we're all so afraid, including myself, like to, to just be like, this is me. Um, and well, I'm putting that bandaid today because I do have one post that I'm going to put out tonight, but this will be like the beginning of that. And it's a little scary because that word can be negative and I don't want people to think, Oh, here it comes. You know what I mean? It's not going to be a bashing, um, post, but that's where I got to tread lightly on how do I share that thing? You know what I mean? that yeah. most people don't like to talk about and affect many people, yeah. you know? Right. And sometimes, um, <clears throat> I know for me, there have been times where I couldn't share specifics because it wasn't uh, it was something I was going through right then or because it wasn't necessarily my story to share. But sometimes saying I'm, sh- I'm going, I'm just going through something and I'm struggling and here's, you know, here's what I'm doing to overcome it. It doesn't even have to be specifics. It can just be like, I'm going through something. And, um, so that's kind of helped me realize like, I don't have to go into all the details, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I do, it is freeing when it's like, you know what, that, this is me and I'm going to share it. And I've even had, you know, family like say stuff about my posts and I'm like, you know what? Like, 
that's I'm I'm okay with your judgments because you're not in the Brene Brown says your critics don't count because they're not in the arena. Like we're in the arena, okay? Yeah. So, but our critics are not, and so I'm just have to like ignore their 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 stuff. Um. All right. Any other any any other thoughts? We have four minutes left. Oh my gosh, this went way too fast. But I love having these discussions with you guys. It's like I'm I'm like oh my gosh, why have I waited so long to do this this year? Um, someone share your thoughts because I can keep them coming. It's so great. Or any other things that stood out to you from this podcast. I know you want to just five, four, three, two, one, that. Um, Kelly, I don't know if this, if we have the time, but how do you branch out into Instagram with every part of you and not give a rip who's out there that can see it? Do you just do it? How do we what? Say that again. Just break out and just go in Instagram and share those things <laughs> with people who don't really know you yet, you know, and just let it go. Just do I it having a powerful why like I got to the point you know when I started color street I was like guess what I don't care what you think because your opinions don't pay my bills so Holla. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I was like I and sometimes it's easier when you don't know them and yeah Emily said Instagram is the easiest audience for me because I don't know them I be so when you have your your why has to be stronger than your pride so for me, my why was like, hey, I've got to help my family get out of this sucky financial situation. And so if you don't like it, bye, like, <laughs> go ahead and not follow me, you know? I, yeah. and I mean, in my previous dark sales company, I had, I had friends and family unfollow me, but, and that kind of hurt, right? But um, Grant Cardone says, if you don't have haters, you're not doing some, you're not doing it right. So um, start sloppy and <laughs> Laura's comment, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? So it really comes back to your why. You've got to have a really strong enough why that is, that pushes you through those, those judgments. You guys go watch why your critics don't count by Brene, Brene Brown on YouTube. It's like, it really helped me when I did have haters and people unfriending me and I still have people unfriending me every day. Um, and that's okay. They're not my people. And if they don't like my stories, like that's, that's fine. Um, and now we're out of time. So, <laughs> okay. Well, this was a really great discussion. You guys, we're going to do it again next month. Cause it was so good. Um, question and maybe reach out to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will reach, um, I'll reach out to Gabriella and, uh, or message me, Gabriella, because we're out of time. And um, thanks for joining us, you guys. Have a good night. Bye.